In 2020, Xavier Howard, defensive back from the Miami Dolphins, became the first NFL player since 2007 to intercept 10 or more passes in a season. In doing so, Howard became only the 7th player of this century and the 77th since the interception became an official NFL statistic in 1940 to intercept 10 or more passes in one season. So, from 1940 to 2000, 70 players intercepted 10 passes or more in one season. From 2000 to 2020, only 7 players have intercepted 10 passes or more in a season. Folks, in simple terms, the interception is disappearing. A 10 interception season does not happen often. But what if I were to tell you that there was one player who only played six seasons in the National Football League, yet holds the NFL record with not one, not two, but three. 10 interception or more seasons. There is that man. He does exist. He's not Deion Sanders. He's not Night Train Lane. He's not Darrell Rivas. He is Don Dahl. Police defensive demon Don Dahl saves the day for Detroit by dropping Motley on the five-yard line. Despite an NFL playing career which lasted only six seasons and ended 70 years ago, Don Dahl remains the only player in NFL history to intercept 10 or more passes in three different seasons. And Don Dahl is one of only 20 NFL players who have intercepted four passes in one game, accomplishing the feat for the Detroit Lions in a 24-7 victory over the Chicago Cardinals, October 23, 1949, at the Old Comiskey Park. Additionally, Dahl holds the NFL all-time record for interception return yardage by a rookie with 301 his rookie season of 1949. The State of California High School Football Player of the Year in 1943, Dahl arrived at the University of Southern California in 1944 when he was still known as Don Burnside and played for the Trojans until 1948, missing the 1945 season to serve in the United States Marine Corps during World War II. While in the Marines, Dahl served aboard the USS Missouri and from the deck of the ship witnessed the Japanese surrender to the United States on September 2nd, 1945. After being honorably discharged from the Marines in 1946, Dahl changed his surname from Burnside. Dahl later explained the reasoning behind his decision. Quote, My stepfather, Adna Dahl, raised me, and as soon as I was old enough and, incidentally, had dough for the legal transfer, I changed my name to his because I was grateful for all Dad had done for me. I thought that if any honors come my way in football, I'd like to be known by his name. However, Dahl recalled that sports writers had a field day with his new name. When I weaved down field, I was the dancing doll, he explained, and if I took too long on a play, I was the mechanical doll. Four-year letterman at USC, leading the Trojans in rushing in 1944, and again leading the Trojans in rushing upon his return from the war in 1947 and in 1948, guiding the Trojans to two Rose Bowl appearances, defeating the University of Tennessee in 1945 while losing to the University of Michigan in 1949. Drafted by the Detroit Lions in the ninth round of the 1949 NFL Draft, Dahl played as a defensive back for the Lions for four years from 1949 to 1952. At 5 feet 11 inches and 185 pounds, Dahl was small for a professional football player. In his first three seasons in the NFL, from 1949 to 1951, Dahl was selected as an All-Pro player and also selected to each of the first four Pro Bowls. The Pro Bowl was first played in 1950, and Don Dahl is one of the few players who played in each of the first four, even receiving the George S. Hallis Trophy as the most valuable player in the 1952 season's Pro Bowl. In 1949, his rookie season, Dahl registered 11 interceptions, which he returned 301 yards, including a 95-yard return for a touchdown against the Pittsburgh Steelers, October 8, 1949. Don Dahl still holds the NFL record for most interception return yards by a rookie, led the NFL in 1949 with 
536 kickoff return yards. Named first team All Pro for 1949, as he was in 1950 when he intercepted 12 passes in 11 games, tied for the Detroit Lions team record with Jack Christensen. Though the 1952 Detroit Lions team is remembered mostly for the offensive output of Bobby Lane, the defense included Don Dahl and led the NFL in both scoring defense and rush defense. In the 1952 NFL Championship game versus the Cleveland Browns, Don Dahl made perhaps the most important play of his NFL career. The battle for the world championship of football. Don Dahl was the cornerstone of that defense. Late in the game, the Cleveland Browns were driving down the field. Uh, Otto Graham, the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, pitched outside to Marianne Motley. He cut the field and into the Detroit secondary. And Motley was sprinting for the corner, and Don Dahl came up from his safety position and made a, a huge tackle. The complete defensive team of Don Dahl saves the day for Detroit by dropping Motley on the five yard. On first down, Graham spins around and tosses a deep pitch out to Marion Motley, who swings wide, then cuts up field, then breaks for the sideline, going 41 yards before being driven out of bounds on the Lions five, where it will be goal to go for Cleveland. Prior to the start of the 1953 NFL season, Dahl was traded by the Detroit Lions to the Washington Redskins, where he played under head coach Curly Lambeau. Dahl totaled 10 interceptions for the 1953 Redskins, making him the first player in NFL history to tally at least 10 interceptions in each of three seasons, 11 in 1949. 12 in 1950, and 10 in 1953, and was also selected to his fourth consecutive Pro Bowl. In January of 1954, the Washington Redskins traded Don Dahl to the Los Angeles Rams in part of a three-team deal that sent Dick Night Train Lane to the Detroit Lions. A successful 1954 season with the Los Angeles Rams in which he intercepted five passes. When he retired from the NFL in 1954, Don Dahl stood as the NFL's all-time interception king, having snagged 41 opponent aerials. Don Dahl, one of the most prolific defensive players the game has ever seen. His selection into the Pro Football Hall of Fame would fulfill the mission of the Hall, honoring the heroes of the game, preserving the game's history, promoting the values of the game, celebrating excellence in every way. Let's take another look at that great run by Motley in slow motion. Motley takes the pitch up, and with the aid of two good blocks, he cuts up field and into the Detroit secondary. At the 30, he heads for the sideline with three Lions to cut pursuit. One dives and misses at the 10, but fleet defensive demon Dom Dahl saves the day for Detroit by dropping Motley on the five-yard line. After retiring as a player, Don Dahl coached both collegiately and professionally for 34 years, including stints under future Hall of Fame head coaches Don Shola and Vince Lombardi. In 1971, Dahl was hired as defensive backfield coach for the Green Bay Packers. Dahl remained with the Packers for three years, helping mold the defensive backfield into one of the NFL's stingiest pass defenses, led by 1972 NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, Willie Buchanan. The Green Bay Packers only surrendered seven touchdown passes to opponents in 1972. In 1973, they remained one of the league's top defenses, despite an injury to Willie Buchanan that limited him to only six games. In January 1974, the Green Bay Packers announced that Don Dahl had resigned because of, quote, personal problems, but it was later revealed that he was fired by head coach Don Devine due to a personality conflict and disagreements over defensive strategy. Upon learning of Dahl's departure, Willie Buchanan, who ironically would end up being Don Dahl's four interception and one game brethren when he accomplished the feat against Dan Fouts in the San Diego Chargers in 1978. More on that in the video soon. Fouts again, and Willie Buchanan again. Upon hearing of Don Dahl's departure, Willie Buchanan said, quote, it hurts to get news like this. Not only was he a very good coach, but he was someone who we could relate to and get along with. There aren't many people like that. 